Yeah. Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Max is over there. All right. It looks like we're sitting beside each other, but he is actually an ocean away. Yeah, halfway around the world. That's right. That's right. This is a transcontinental show. Going global. It makes it makes it seem really epic. <laughs> It's just two dudes. All right, so, uh, so we have to talk about the next match. It's happening whether we want it to or not. We do. Last it, one. Yes. Get it out of the way. I yes. Mean, this season's done. It's finished. We don't have to put up with it anymore. Yeah, and we can start looking to... We can start obsessing about transfer news and new manager oh. news and new director of football and... Hey, get Can't your... Wait for the it. ITKs are... Are getting their <laughs> typing gonna, fingers ready. <laughs> They're gonna come out with them full force, aren't they? They are. We're gonna hear. It's gonna be. We're gonna hear some whoppers. We're gonna yeah. hear some legit whoppers. It's yeah. yeah. And and some of them are gonna be right. That's the thing. Some of these people are gonna be right. So, how to separate the wheat from the chaff? That's not easy. Mm. Maybe we should talk about that sometime. Um, mm. So, really quickly, mediocrity cup. Who will win? <laughs> we shall see. We'll be we'll be at the uh, the vacuous void that is West Ham's new stadium. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you uh, no one can hear you scream there, literally, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, West Ham's current form is they are fifteenth in the table with thirty eight points. They've they've actually I mean they got a win recently yeah. which is one of the things that really kind of put them out of reach. Um, they they two nil over Leicester uh, and they had a good game. Mm. But Crack and goal for Mark Noble as well. Yeah, I mean that was nice. That was ridiculous. Yeah. Rocket, you you dream about scoring them ball fast here on the edge of the box and you and you just lace it. Keeper's got no chance. It's funny. Great strike. I hear Mark Noble. I immediately think red card. Um, I immediately think the yeah, guy two two a challenge <laughs> every or, time ragging, ragging a fan when a fan ran on the pitch. Yep, yeah. or, but you forget that there is some football ability there. You know mm. that it it is present there. That goal is evidence of that. Yeah. Um, a good player doesn't accidentally, or, or a crap player doesn't accidentally do that often. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, anyway, that happened. Before that, though, they had lost to City. You know, four to one. They lost to Arsenal four to one. Yeah. And by the way, we are recording this on a Tuesday, so the Thursday game has not happened. So we don't know. Mm, we'll see what actually. Know. Yeah. Um, their possible lineup. Uh, gonna start with Adrian in goal, not Joe Hart. It's probably what I should have just said in the first place. Just say not Joe Hart is starting in goal. <laughs> uh. Funny, interesting story when you hear Moyes talking about how he was there, he's interested in keeping Joe Hart because of his professional attitude after mm. he was benched. David Moyes all over that, isn't it? That's David Moyes just all over. <sighs> yeah, and what's really funny is one of the reasons Kuman didn't want him is because uh, the main reason is that Hart was not cool with if he had to be benched or not. He wanted to be guaranteed playing time. Hmm. And now yeah. you hear Moyes complimenting Hart on like the opposite, which is interesting. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so Adrian in goal, uh, who I still don't really like since that shootout when he was giving jo Joel, Joel shit like right yeah. before his kick. Still don't uh, like that guy. When he, when he took his gloves off, <sighs> mid run up. Yeah. Oh. It's ridiculous. Oh, I got. Hard up. Yeah, that would hurt. Um, yeah. I owed my friend, who's a an irons guy, after that one in a bet. wasn't cool. So uh, anyway, we're gonna move past the keeper now. Uh, uh, Declan Rice, Ogbana, who you should be familiar with, everybody. Yep. Um, Aaron Cresswell, uh, Zavaleta, um, yeah, and Mazuaku. I think would be those five main defenders, yeah, or five. Patrice, or or Patrice Evra. You know, mm. we could see him there, um, but they're kind of going three in the back, two on the two of his wing backs. So essentially five. But you know, mm -hmm. uh, then you could see Kuyate and Noble. Uh, you might see Ob Obiang get in there because I believe he's healthy now. But yep. um, Jao Mario, who scored at the weekend, 
Lanzini, mm -hmm. uh, who's a clever little player, and Arnautovic, who's kind of taken on a striking role this season. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's paid off. He's, he's actually scored. Dare I say I'd like him at Everton, maybe? He already, he already mm. used us for a new contract. Mm. You remember that? Yeah. Everybody was saying, oh, we're going to get Arnautovic. And I was like, well, you know, big, good, inconsistent player. But he's got some good highlights, so maybe he could do something mm. for us. And then he signs a contract with Stoke. He mm. was using yeah. us. I remember. Oh, yeah, when he was at Stoke. But I think now he's really come into his own, hasn't he? I think... Moise has come in and said, "Listen, you know, I mean, I, mean, I know, I know, we, we, you know, we give Moise the run of the mill, but to his credit, like, we know he's, you know, he's a really good man manager, and he can get the best out of individual players. And I think he's really turned round to out of it and said, you know, you need to start pulling your weight in this side because, in terms of quality, I think he's probably about the best that they've got. And you know, it's, it's showing now. It's like you know, I think he scored in the last few games as well, and." He looked like a really good, um, not so much a focal point, because I think there's more to his game than just being, you know, a tall centre forward, because he seemed like he can move it about well with his feet. But as I say, I think he'd be a useful player at 11. It's interesting, because I do think he likes being the man. Mm. And I think that's one of the reasons he might be thriving, is because it's sometimes it's easy to kind of disappear on the wing. Yeah. Um, play naturally drifts to the other side. It happens. Um, and frankly, I think you see most players, most of the inconsistent players are always wingers. Yeah. Whenever you hear of inconsistent players, they're, they're on the wing. Um, putting him in the center, I feel like uh, he's getting more touches in, a more, in more dangerous areas. And yeah. he's got a shot on him. Yeah. Um, he was my main danger man mm -hmm. that I was going to say. Um, you know, so it, it's interesting because the Moyes has changed a lot about this about this uh, West Ham squad. Yeah, uh, and, and I feel yeah. like the, the Iron supporters have been, uh, you know, angry for a while this season. Mm -hmm. um, but if he steers yeah. them to safety, they may still want a new man manager. What's that? Yeah, like? I think that that that's the case. I know. <laughs> I know. But um, I, I think I think we can say you know, we can share our, our empathy there really, because we can un we understand what it what it's like to yeah. to have Moyes as your manager when things aren't going so well. I mean, I know he stayed with us for you know a long period of time in comparison to the usual managerial range these days. He stayed you know at a very long period of time, but again, we we did have those experiences of, of wanting them out and wanting someone a bit more progressive. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah, I think, and rightfully so. Really, that they're, they're wanting a new manager. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, and I, and I don't know if that's across the board, but you know, I see some Iron supporters on Twitter. Yeah, same. I, I've seen a lot of that really, and that's what I'm going off. Yeah. Um. So let's uh let's sort of move past their uh, their lineup and get to ours, which will I I think depend entirely on injuries. Okay, um, mm -hmm. will will Rooney or Walcott be healthy? Yeah. Um, it, it, I mean, it will have been a week. So if they're just little knocks, you know. However, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, this is the question, do we think they're going to just be safe with them and keep them there regardless because <laughs> this game doesn't really matter so that they can play some other players who haven't gotten to play as much? Possibly, yeah. I think that could that could be the case. But one thing I will say is the the injury to Rooney. As soon as I saw Rooney wasn't in, you know, on even on the bench against Southampton, that really pissed me off. Because how many times have we said here the how it's all about how you use Rooney? Don't burn him out. You can't play him week after week after week. Yeah. And as soon as he as soon as we he had this bust up with Sam at the derby. Sam gave him a run in the side, and lo and behold, look what's happened. You know, yep. I think, what was it? Is it? A calf and a knee for the pair of them. Yes. I think the Theo's on his calf, yeah. something like that. But it seemed like quite a, you know, a wear and tear injury. And it, it, 
it's simple stuff. I think when when, when we brought Rooney in, I think that should have been one of the, the main points of discussion is that, you know, Wayne, I know you want to play a lot and you want to play as much as you can, but given given how you are now, given your age, given the fact you're not as physically dominant or as fast as you want to wear, we, we're not going to, we can't afford to play you every game because you're going to blow out and you are a very useful player to have. So we do need you fit and ready to go for these mm-hmm. moments as, as shown by the home game where at, at the Dixies he won the best individual performance in that home game against West Ham where he got that hat-trick. But in terms of our own team, as you say, I think we should, I don't, I don't know. Will Theo be fit? Because I think Theo was a key, pe- a key component that was missing from the Southampton game for us. Agreed. Completely. You know, mm. that was the thing I thought we were missing the most. You know, we can always rely on him to give us some sort of explosive attack up the side. But he, I feel like he's also not getting credit for his interchange, the play he has, the combination play that he has with other players. He combines yeah. well. I mean I mean it's it's the kind of thing that you see from an Arsenal player. Yeah. You know? He mm. combines well. He's constantly trying to one two up the field. It's he, we missed him a lot. Yeah. Um Rooney, I immediately thought, oh, he's been benched because of his play hasn't been that strong lately. Mm. Which it, it hasn't, you know. Mm. But no, no. so so it was one of those things where I wasn't sure what to believe. Um, mm. I do think there are certain players who are World Cup bound that are shoe ins to start. You know, hit me, hit me with them. Uh, Pickford, Keane, Gay, um, and honestly, Vlasic. If Vlasic gets gets enough time, he could be on that roster. Yeah. Okay, for Croatia. I've heard initially that he had some hopes, and then when we didn't play him, his hopes faded, and now all of a yeah. sudden we're he's getting time. Yeah, he's getting a run. Okay, I think that's very strategic. Um, yeah. I, also, I think it's interesting. Nias has been playing every game. Okay. Yeah. That's strategic. They're doing that on purpose. And also Funes Mori. He's been coming in almost yep. every game. This is this is totally for World Cup prep. Guaranteed yeah. because it makes our club look better. And to be honest, am I completely against that? No. Mm. I'm not. Uh, as long as it doesn't make us look like total shit, I'm okay. You know? Mm. Uh, yeah. So I think we're probably on the same... Wavelength when we say Pickford, Coleman, Keane, Jagielka, Baines. Okay. Yep. Um, the only question is whether or not Funes Mori might start. But I, I don't I, think I, so. I I don't want to see that system. I, I don't want to change see that change of system again because it you know it, it gave it, it gave the opposition so much room to exploit us. I meant four uh, Jagielka actually. Yeah. Not three it, at the back. I don't think that's a stable enough partnership. I though. totally agree. That's that's why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but that's why I don't think he's actually going to start. But I just know mm. that if Sam it, it gets instructions, start him. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I think he would prefer Keane to go to the World Cup because that's a bigger question. He's more yeah. at risk. And that's why he's yeah. trying to pump Keane up and make him look good. And keeping yeah. him in there with Jags is the way mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah. You know? So... We'll see. Uh, Gay. He's in. Gay. Uh, Sh- Schneiderlin. Given his recent form, you can't fault it, can you? You sort of have to. Um, then there's a question. Is Rooney healthy? If Rooney's healthy, he'll probably come back in. Uh, last game of the season. Probably he will come back in. Um, mm-hmm. If not, we'll see Davies or Clausen. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fact that Clausen got a little run, will, will the manager... Try to give him more time to try to convince him not to leave. We'll see. Don't think it, I don't think it'll necessarily be a start though. I think mm. it'll be. Mm. Hopefully he'll get more minutes than he did against Southampton, but I do think Davies will start and he'll come mm. on later on. Um, and then we'll probably see uh, Vlasic and Walcott. Um, Hopefully. Yeah, if Walcott's not in, obviously Vlasi slots in. Vlasi slots yeah. in. Blue. Yeah. I see Vlasi. I said, I combined the two. It's like a hybrid. (laughs) You know, that's actually not a bad hybrid, though. You put those two guys together, 
No, no, I'd be you able got a to player. Use, maybe a few crosses that get put into the box then. Uh, Vlasic playing the wing is not particularly dangerous, is it? Um, the only thing he really does... We, we feed it to him, he holds on to the ball, and he distributes. A lot of times, it's going right back where it came from, or it's going sideways. There's not yeah. a lot of turn and go, just because he's out of position. Yeah, I, I agree, but I also think, the as I've said, I think the role that he's playing as a winger just doesn't suit him at all. I think what he, what he suits is, you know, the kind of short, sharp, right, you make a decisive, you know, choice really of what mm. you do you know you, you either fire a ball across the six yard box or you have a go for goal mm -hmm. but with the way we play now i think you know because we, we're focused so much on going down the flanks i think you know the wingers are told listen you need to be able to hold on to the ball for a bit mm -hmm. longer look try and assess what's going on try and pick out any decent runs or movements and as i said earlier this is why where the whole just playing it around the opposition box is coming from and as you say it just it's not his forte really yeah. i think he's the kind of guy that needs you know decisiveness mm -hmm. and he, he needs the you know you can go and express yourself but with the, as you know the defensive responsibility is just not where the strengths lie additionally it's hard to express yourself as much on the wing if you're not used to it because mm -hmm. that's a lot less space to work with yeah you know when you go from playing in the center out to the wing you almost feel like your wings have been clipped a little bit you know, mm. it's a weird change at first yeah. if yeah. you're used to I, playing in the center for a while. I, I, I said that about, um, I mean, it's going back a bit now. I think it was under Martinez when Ross Barkley got a stint when he, when he got played on the wing under Martinez. I mm -hmm. thought, you know, I mean, particularly Ross, because we know what Ross was like when we had him. You know, he just he couldn't make a decision to save his life, could he, really? Mm -hmm. And he, he can't, you know, when you're so tight to the line, there's, a, you know, there's not yeah. much more room. There's not room for error. Like, you, as you say, if you put them in the middle, there's a lot more space to work with and a lot more that you can get in and amongst, really. Yeah. But when you're so tight to the line, you're a lot more limited than what you can do. And I, I do agree with you. I think if we did give him a stint where, you know, we kind of put him in the middle. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I would do. A lot of times you see quicker players on the flanks. Period. Mm. Flashic yeah. is not necessarily a quick player. I think his game is not too much unlike Ross. I don't think mm. it's very different. I think Ross is more athletic. Uh, yeah. I think Vlasic is smarter. Yeah. Um, and, and that's I think they and I think they both can carry the ball into space in the middle. I think they're both very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know. Who knows if Vlasic actually gets that opportunity though? You know. Um, I don't see it really happening in this game, but you know, honestly, Sam has been doing some weird things with substitutions. You yeah. know, I mean, he, he, got, he become more lenient, hasn't he? Really? Yeah, I'd say. It's it, it, there's a little bit more experimentation, you yeah. know, um, mixed with rigid fear of loss. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Total. Tosin up front as well, surely. Uh, I don't think it's much of a debate between him and Umar. I think we were both settled on Umar as the player to bring off the bench. Yeah, we need and we need Tosin to just continue getting used to the league. Just continue that yeah. experience. Get it any 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 bit we can give him, that's the way to do it. Um, yeah. I want to keep him happy. We need we need uh, Tosun Pasha. Yeah. He's gotta be we He's one he of the ones I. Yeah, he's the he's the one that's the, there's there's certain ones where I immediately plug him in, and I don't even think about it. Yeah. He's one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, uh, are we good? Oh no no prediction. We gotta mm, predict. What's God. our what are our predictions? For give our lad, give our fans something to send them home happy. You know we've been we've been no way two ways about it. We've been put, put through some shit this season. So, you know, give the lads a good go. 2-0-11. Ah. Once again, my friend, you are more optimistic than I am. Mm. Seeing as we are playing in a vacuum this weekend, and seeing as <laughs> there's possibly zero to ride on, and zero mm. atmosphere, and zero everything. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. I'm predicting yeah. nil nil. Uh, I'm predicting a, a draw. Uh, Mediocrity Bowl lives up to its name. Mediocrity yeah. Cup. I, I said it like it's a American football. Mediocrity <laughs> Bowl. 
On New Year's Eve, yeah. yeah. The Mediocrity Cup lives up to his name, so. Yeah, no no matter how loud, how loud our fans are going to be, you still won't be able to bloody hear them. Nope, nope. <laughs> Told you, at West Ham, no one can hear you scream. That's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, pretty much the tagline for every sci-fi I movie. I, I, ever. I was thinking that, that, that'd be a great head in that, won't it? Yeah, that's... West Ham away, they can't hear you scream. <laughs> Mm. All right, so I guess that's it for our West Ham preview. Uh, we are doing caption contest. Check it out. It's Michael Keane making a very strange face, almost is a little uh, little zombie esque actually. Um, yeah. So uh, what do you what do you think about that? Tell us what you think. Uh, caption. Put it down below in the comments. We'll pick our favorites and we'll do a segment on it at the end of the season. So yeah, have fun with this. I think it's kind of a Kind of a great photo, actually. So, um, also, subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. Uh, we're, we're it's over 720 now. We're slowly clicking along. Um, yeah, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot for, uh, for your interest. Uh, like and comment stuff. Get the conversation going. That's cool. Follow us on Twitter and all that hot stuff. Um, please check out uh, Max. He's got, uh, he's got material and analysis on the Toffee Blues website. Check out mm -hmm. uh, the Toffee Blues website. Other people write analysis there too. Check that out. Check out the Toffee Blues on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I think that is it. No more plugging. Yes. All right. Max, thanks so much, man. Been a pleasure, as always. Good to talk to you. Um, for Max, for Jerry, uh, yeah, for the Toffee Blues. We're out.